Okay, many of you struggled out there with hamstring tendinopathies. We're talking about a high hamstring tendinopathy, meaning up the top end, not down the bottom end. So where that hamstring group inserts into the initial tuberosity, where that tendon has got the weakening, the degenerative changes through maybe overuse, or overload. Regardless, if you've been diagnosed with a hamstring tendinopathy, it's really hard to get right. So I'm gonna split this into two parts. This is part one. This is the early intervention stage, rehab work, where you're trying to get the hamstring working. The second part is more advanced training, so don't forget to check that one out later down the track. So I'm gonna give you four things to work on that go sort of in order, sort of start to finish, to complement your physio work. So, First thing you're going to work on is four point hip extension. Now, you'll probably find this and the other ones are quite boring. They're quite sort of low level, but that's the idea. If you're really acute and this is really sore and you can't run or play sport, then you've got to start rebuilding that hamstring tendon. First thing I'll get you working on is trying to get some decent core stability when you do hip extension. So, what we're trying to aim for is what we call a four point hip extension, which is going from this position to that position and back but making sure you don't go into extension, all right? We've got to make sure when you're getting this hamstring tendon better, you've got to start working on your spinal stability, some core strength, so you're stable here when you do hip extension, whether that be a hip thrust, a deadlift, a sprint, running, whatever. This has got to come priority first in your early intervention. So I would work on stabilizing through here, all right, making sure you don't drop into extension. When you move that, say this is my leg, that's the sore one. When you move that leg, you've got to make sure your knee stays bent at 90 degrees and your heel goes up to the ceiling. Now you don't have to go too far. Remember, we're going to go below pain, so I don't want too much pain here. But try and have your rep range sitting around about, maybe around about four or five reps of that, and you build up to eight or 10 reps of that, depending on your pain levels, okay? So working on that. Things you gotta be aware of, don't do this. You see that movement there where I extend my back? So don't push high and try and go way up here, thinking that's gonna get better. Because if you lose your core stability, you're losing the base of support for that hamstring. So there's no point doing that. The second thing I want you to do is make sure you don't straighten your leg. So when you go here, don't go and push your leg straight, thinking it's going higher, because you're gonna start using your quads to do the movement. We want your hamstrings to do the movement, which is hip extension, okay, not knee extension. So make sure you do it on not using your quads with that one. You can advance that. So what you can use, now that long band is your first option, okay, because you've got more expansion for that. The second option is the booty band. So let's start with the first option. This one here, what I'd do is put it around the foot that you're doing hip extension on, okay, and then the same hand is your anchor point. So like that. So what you've got now is a really long extension of that load. Okay, so this is a very easy way to add on a little bit of load to do when you're in that hip extension neutral position, like that. Okay, so you're just adding a little bit more on than what gravity does. Okay, it's not much. And that's a good place to start. You can always increase the tension of that. Remember, we're talking about people who are like really sore and, and quite weak on that tendon. So you don't want too much load going. There's no point being a hero with that. So once you've got that better though, you could advance the bands, you could double the band, okay? So it's shorter, so there's less expansion. Then when you get really good, then you can add a booty band or something like this, where you're like a loop band, where you're putting that around one knee, okay? and you're gonna extend that way. Okay, so there's way more tension on that than I've got, and it's way shorter, so there's a lot more load. So for me to get up higher, it takes a lot more in there. So that'll be way down the track when I'm a bit stronger, and that could turn into just some general hip extension strengthening for your tendon. Okay, it's when that tendon's a lot healthier, a lot stronger. So don't start with that one first up. Number two is hip extension again. Hey, you probably realize there's a lot of hip extension. We are focusing on this stage one, hip extension. The hamstring does a lot more than that. It looks after the ACL, does knee flexion, helps you sprint. Hip extension for that high hamstring tendinopathy is gonna be the first point of call of trying to get this stronger. So what I want you to work on with this exercise is lying face down on this, but make sure that your feet are straight. Now this a long lever one. Before we were doing bent knee, right? Short lever stuff, okay? Now the hamstring is longer, 
all right it's not short it's long plus the levers long so it's actually harder on that hamstring to do this okay but it's gonna be easier for your core because you can stabilize by the bench now it could be a sofa as well so you don't have to have a bench list, it could be your sofa what you want to try and do is keep one leg or well, both legs straight slowly lift that one leg up in the air and again same thing don't let your back arch right so you, even though you're supported by the bench you're now trying to use your core to stop yourself going into hip extensions you may find you don't actually have much range but what we're working on is that real inner range stuff the end part here right right up into there trying to just get that contraction going and yes you use your glutes of course because you're doing hip extension but that end range work when we're sort of sprinting that's what we want to be trying to focus on and trust me that leg is enough what i want you to try and get it's that rep range quite high with that so get up to 12 15 reps it because there's you know technically there's no banded load with that so it's not too hard as long as it stays pain free that's the second one you want to definitely work on in this initial stage of trying to get things going now you notice for those first two there wasn't any eccentric work done because it's really hard to do eccentric training with that so what i'm going to dump in is some eccentric training work now with the second two to try and help you a bit further so eccentric training for tennis is really good i would try and get your rep range a little bit lower this time to start with so you know three to five reps if you like as long as you stay pain free and then build it up to your sort of 12 reps then we go concentric so four an elevated bridge which is so good for hamstrings I want you to be in a position when you lift your bum up your knee is not at 90 degrees so 90 degrees is there so your knee doesn't want to be at right angles you want to be away from the bed or the sofa or whatever to about maybe 120 130 degrees okay because what that'll do is lengthen the hamstring out it'll make you work hard here the glute can't work as hard when it's back there. If your bum's close to the glute, we, glute works more, we want to bias the hamstring and stop the glute doing so much work. So we're going to really target that. That's the way you're going to do it. But if you just go up and down two legs, that's going to keep everything even, okay? Your good leg's going to support the bad leg. We want to go one-legged, but you haven't got enough strength to go one-legged. So what we're going to get you doing is doing one-legged on the way down, two legs on the way up to give you a rest period, okay? Because we want to be harder than two legs up and down, we don't want it as hard as one leg up and down. So we go two legs up. Now this is the affected leg. Raise one leg, hold it, lower that down. Okay, so let's try it again. Two legs up, high as you can go without pain, without strain. Lift one leg, hold it, lower that down. Now a lot of you are gonna feel a lot of muscle belly stuff going here, some work going on here. But that's, you know, that puts some load on here, all right? Some of you will feel the pain here. I don't want pain here because you don't want too much load there. Little bit's okay, but you've got to keep it around about below a two or three out of 10, to be honest. So what you want to aim for, if you're feeling pain here, it's for those people who are really weak in here. You go up with two. When you come down, instead of being 100% on one and zero on the other, try sort of like varying it, maybe 80%. And 20 or 75 and 25 so what i mean is you won't see it but when i come up there's 50 50. then when i come down i've still got weight on this one but i've got more on this one so that keeps me below pain in that hamstring okay so those people who are having pain there that's the way you do it and what you do is to progress that to being able to do that okay and come down is you just go from okay 75 then 80 then 90 100 like that, okay? Maybe you might even have to start 55, 45. It depends on how weak you are. But just progress it. Every time you do it, see if you can get a little bit more load there, stay below that sort of pain threshold so you get stronger, not more painful. Okay, the last one you need to do is some sort of hip hinge deadlift type movement for that hamstring. But we don't want to do a single leg deadlift all by itself because that's more full on strengthening. Check out part two for that. We're going to try and do an eccentric standing single leg deadlift with load you're going to probably think how the hell are you going to do that i will show you what this will do is tie everything together we've done some components of all hip extensions okay now we've got to put through a pattern of movement now this is technically not as heavy loading as some of the others perhaps but it is more technically difficult for the brain and getting that working so what i want you to do is use that trusty old band of yours again for the load component okay put it around one leg all right, that is your load. So when I go down into a deadlift, I will feel that load in my hamstring. But what you're gonna try and do is do it easily. So I only want that load on the way down, right? 
But if I do it full like that, okay, that's down and up. Okay, that's constantly eccentric. So what usually I suggest you do is just put that foot back a little bit, ready for some load. So what you can do is start off like that, take this load to almost nothing. So when you drop down, the weight is on my leg. Okay, go down to sort of halfway. And then when you come back, put some weight through that back. Okay, so position that foot where you can actually get a bit of weight through it. So weight off that back leg, down you go weight on that back leg. It doesn't have to be much. If you're struggling with that, that position, you're not putting enough weight through, bring it forward more. Okay, so again, light on the way down, heavy on the way up, meaning heavy load on this leg on the way up. Right? If you go that far, what you'll need to do, you'll notice as I go down, it gets loose. Okay, so I'm going to have to tighten that band up by one. There's my next level. All right. Make sure when you are doing a single leg deadlift, you are, have a little slight bend in that knee. But the work comes from hip extension. So you go backwards with the bum, all right, and then push through both feet on the way up. So let's try that again, because I know this gets a bit confusing. That bag leg sitting just back here. Depends on where you want it. You can either have it forward or back. It doesn't really matter, as long as you can put some weight through it. Minimal weight. Sit my bum back, hinge at the knee, hinge the hip, feel that hamstring work, and then put some weight through my left leg and stand up again 50 50. All right, that will mean you're getting more work rate done on the eccentric phase, less on the concentric phase. Depending on how strong you are, everyone's a little bit different how strong they are, how injured they are. The band load will determine that. So, work on whether you're yellow, green, whatever you need to on that and how much tension you've got on that, and ma marry that up so you're hardly feeling any pain at all with that. And as time goes on, you should be getting less and less and less that you can go up with the bands. So, there's my four. Try those four in a row. That's my early intervention, stage one if you like, upper hamstring tendinopathy. Then we'll work on stage two, which advances all that into more and more strengthening. See you next time.